This is a podcast by The Straits Times. Welcome to Health Check, a podcast series by The Straits Times, hosted by Joyce Teo. In this episode, we look at whether plant stanols and a more natural diet can help reduce cholesterol. This episode is brought to you by Vitaplus Benacol. Too much of that waxy, fat-like substance called cholesterol can block your blood vessels, making you more likely to get heart problems or a stroke. But high cholesterol does not cause symptoms. The good thing is that you can lower your cholesterol by maintaining a healthy diet and exercising regularly, though some people also need medications. So when it comes to diet, it's not just about eating more fruits and vegetables. Today, there are some food products that have added plant stanols and sterols which may benefit those with high cholesterol. In this episode, we will zoom in on plant stanols with our special guest, Helena Gilling, Professor Emerita of Clinical Nutrition and Senior Lecturer in Internal Medicine at the University of Helsinki in Finland. Hi, Prof Gilling. Thanks for coming on Health Check. Yes, hello. Thank you. Right, so Prof, you've done a lot of research on cholesterol and plant stanols and sterols, right? So today we're going to focus on plant stanols. Can you tell us what, uh, what is this compound and how effective is it in lowering cholesterol? The um, plants uh, have two types of uh, so-called phytosterols, plant stanols and plant sterols, and uh, they have the same functions in plants as cholesterol has in man. And they are essential for the well-being of the plant. I will concentrate on plant stanols in the following. Uh, they are present in plant-based foods, especially in vegetable oils, cereals, nuts, fruits. The mankind has consumed plant stanols in their diet probably ever. Uh, plant stanols inhibit cholesterol absorption so that only half of cholesterol is absorbed from the intestine and delivered to uh, liver. As a result, LDL cholesterol uh, is lowered. Plant stanols themselves are practically unabsorbed and they are excreted to the stools together with the unabsorbed cholesterol. In uh, 1989, two professors, Tatu Miettinen from the University of Helsinki and Ingmar Wester from Raisio Group, became interested in plant stanols as a dietary means to lower cholesterol and especially uh, low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, which causes atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, which are coronary heart disease, a stroke and peripheral vascular diseases. These three diseases are the most important diseases in the world killing people. They cause more than one-fifth of all deaths in the world. This invention of um, plant stanols as using as a dietary means resulted uh, in a development of plant stanol ester which is a fat-soluble ingredient which could be added into various food products and uh, effectively lower LDL cholesterol when used as part of meals. The efficacy and safety of plant stanol esters has extensively been evaluated in around uh, 80 clinical randomized controlled uh, trials during the 25-year uh, era of plant stanols uh, at the market. Uh, the safety profile is excellent and during these 25 years no adverse effects have been recorded. The efficacy of plant stanol esters uh, as 2 to 3 gram of plant stanols consumed daily is that they lower LDL cholesterol from 9 to 12 uh, percent so that the absolute LDL cholesterol reduction is about 0.4 millimole per lit liter which is 16 milligram per deciliter. And uh, the uh, important thing is that foods containing plant stanol ester can be combined with other dietary means which lower LDL cholesterol. Uh, this combination reduces LDL cholesterol on average by 35% compared with a habitual diet. Regular statins reach to this 35%. 
And uh, the, th the second good point is that plant stenolesters can also be combined with statins and uh, they have an additive 10% LDL cholesterol lowering effect on average on top of statin depending on the plant stenol dose. I see. Prof, so you're saying that the, these foods can be eaten together with a healthy diet, right? Yes. Who would benefit from taking plant stenols? Would this be for people with mildly high cholesterol? All people will benefit from plant stenol, uh, ester. Uh, uh, of course, those people who have ele elevated LDL, low-density lipoprotein cholesterol levels um, benefit best because uh, the risk to develop uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease is, is uh, uh, larger than those who have a normal or uh, near normal uh, low-density lipoprotein LDL cholesterol levels. Um, the problem is that also those people who um, are having a normal, uh, so-called optimal uh, LDL levels can develop uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular diseases from early middle age to the 50s. We know today quite well that uh, the optimal LDL cholesterol level for uh, mankind is 1.5 millimole per liter, uh, which is 58 milligram per deciliter. And most people in our societies today uh, uh, have higher levels. And uh, it has been demonstrated quite convincingly that, that after this uh, 1.5 millimole per liter or 58 milligram per deciliter, the uh, atherosclerotic process is beginning in the uh, arteries and during the years from uh, early middle age to uh, 50 years, uh, the atherosclerosis is um, narrowing the lumen of the arteries and uh, the process is progressing towards fulminant myocardial infarction with chest pain at the age of 50. So it is wise to start lifestyle, lifestyle intervention in early middle age with combining plant stenolesters and heart healthy diet to other lifestyle uh, management such as weight watching and habi habitual physical exercise. Now, if you like what you've been hearing so far, do subscribe to Health Check Podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. Like us and give us a rating. Back to Joyce Teo's conversation with Professor Helena Gilling as they discuss whether plant stenols can help reduce cholesterol. This episode is brought to you by Vitaplus Benacol. Prof, so how long do people have to take it before they can see any effect? The effect is coming in uh, in two weeks, so that uh, after two weeks, uh, you know uh, what is the effect of uh, plant stenolester and the combination of plant stenolester with heart healthy diet. So it's very it's very fast. If we combine this uh, about ten percent uh, LDL cholesterol reduction with the heart healthy. Uh, other approaches of the heart healthy diet. We redu if we reduce dietary saturated fat and um, and uh, trans fats and substitute them um, with unsaturated fat rich oils like uh, soybean uh, soybean safflower sunflower rapeseed oil. And if we add dietary fiber such as uh, soluble fiber from legumes, fruits, vegetables. Whole, uh, whole grain cereals. If we reduce dietary cholesterol intake, if we, for example, reduce the number of egg yolks uh, used weekly, uh, and then we combine these to uh, taking plant stanol ester products, we get this 35% LDL cholesterol reduction, which is a very, very good result. The second important thing in addition to lowering LDL cholesterol is that we obviously can also to prevent the atherosclerosis process and uh, the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk with this plant, uh, plant stanol ester because if we were using a regression equation from large population-based dietary and statin interventions of LDL cholesterol lowering and, and 
and CB event risk, re, uh, cardiovascular event risk reduction. And we could calculate that the LDL cholesterol reduction obtained with plant stanol ester consumption only reduces the risk of cardiovascular events by 9%, which means that uh, almost every 10th cardiovascular event can be reduced by plant stanol ester consumption. If we combine the um, heart healthy diet effect to these figures, we can uh, we can reduce almost every fifth cardiovascular event. And this is a very, very good result. Right, Prof. Um, I'm just imagining if I'm on the verge of being prescribed statin, right, and I want to avoid it for as long as possible. Um, you know, apart from following a healthy diet and exercising, will taking plant stenols every day make a difference? Like, can I avoid it? Probably, yes. Uh, it depends on your LDL cholesterol levels and the other risk factors. The backbone measure in every person and in all LDL cholesterol levels is lifestyle advice and lifestyle intervention. But if a person has already, for example, coronary heart disease or a very high risk for the development of it, the lifestyle intervention is combined with drug treatment usually with statins. So in these cases, a statin cannot be avoided, but its dose probably is smaller when combined with the lifestyle changes. And if you have a low risk level, uh, if you are practically healthy, but LDL cholesterol is a little bit elevated, then uh, probably the lifestyle changes combined with plant stanol esters will do the job for you so that you don't need any drug treatment at all. And you can go ahead your life without any drugs and have your LDL cholesterol uh, level under good, good control with these lifestyle changes completed with plant stanol esters. Is there anything that people should take note of when consuming plant stanols? There are no medications or diseases which make plant stanols uh, risky. And they are very well tolerated. They don't cause any side effects. They don't cause any uh, bowel effects or anything like that. Do uh, food products fortified with plant stanols work in the same way as plant stanol supplements? In Finland, uh, we uh, started with uh, margarine uh, added with plant stanols uh, because um, the uh, Finnish people are eating much bread and margarine was a good start. There are products like dairy products, like yogurt, having plant stanols, there are biscuits. It is possible to have plant stanols in a drinkable product. In general, the, the, the uh, stanol ester products should be taken uh, with a meal because then the effect is quite guaranteed that it can do its complicated work in the intestine to interfere with cholesterol absorption. So they usually have to be taken uh, together with meal, they are more effect they are effective in that way. You know, are there people who should avoid taking such products, maybe when they're pregnant? These plant stanols, they, they, their serum levels are so low that uh, they pro pro probably do not uh, do anything to the baby, uh, but plant sterols do uh, pass uh, the uh, placental blood flow from mother to the child uh, so that uh, also a small amount of plant stanols probably can do that and it is it is better to uh, avoid uh, these both uh, 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 these phytosterols completely during pregnancy but otherwise um, otherwise i i can't figure out any specific condition where these should be avoided. Thanks for your time, Prof. Thanks for helping us understand plant stanols. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for, these, uh, uh, for your topical questions and uh, for this very important discussion. It was a great pleasure for me. Thank you.
Well, that's a wrap for Health Check, a podcast series by The Straits Times. Don't forget to subscribe to us for free on your favourite audio apps, Apple Podcasts, Spotify or Google Podcasts. Search for Straits Times Health Check. Like us and give us a rating. This episode is brought to you by Fighter Plus Benacol. That was an SPH podcast by The Straits Times. Find us on Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts or streaming on Google Home. Do feedback to us at podcast.sph.com.sg. You can also check out more podcasts on various topics at The Straits Times, The Business Times and Money FM 89.3.